Hi, I'm Nick at SideView, and this is Cooking with SideView, Episode 5. Uh, before we get started, you want to note the little icon at the lower right of this, the icon that makes this video full screen. If you click that, after a few seconds, it'll switch to a higher definition feed, and that'll help you read things a lot more easily. There's going to be a little bit of code in this presentation, so remember that for later if you don't do it now. Today, we're going to talk about the pull-down module, why it's awesome, why you should use it. Pulldown has been around since the very early days of SideView Utils, more than two years ago. It's a very reliable module, and it's also had a lot of polish added to it over the years. Here quickly is the sort of map of SideView Utils. If you've seen the previous episode, you'll be familiar with this diagram. But these modules on the left, the black ones in black, are the Splunk modules that can be replaced by one of these main SideView Utils modules in the center column. You'll see the pulldown module here is shown replacing the static select module and the search select lister module. It can also replace the entity select lister as well very easily, but I didn't show that here. So what you get when you replace search select lister and static select with pulldown is a vastly simpler module and you no longer need to deal with intentions. You don't need to deal with convert to intention modules. And it's got several features that those core modules don't have. It also has some better usability and performance. We're going to go through these bullets here, so don't worry if you don't understand them. First up, the big guy in the room, let's cover the intentions difference. So why is it a good thing that you'll never have to worry about intentions again? Here's a sample configuration of the search select lister module. If you're an old hand of the advanced XML, this should look familiar. This shows a search select lister module paired up with a convert to intention module. With the core systems, you always have to use these two modules together, so they're kind of one unit. The model with the course Blanc system here is that you create some key, also sometimes known as a setting, and you send that downstream. So then you use, so you can see here this search select lister is sending down user underscore setting as its key, and it, it calls it setting to create. Then in this in the Splunk model, you use a convert to intention module or one of the other converter modules to convert that abstract setting thing into another abstract thing called an intention. So here we see that it's converted the user setting and it's turned it into a string replace intention that is this block here. Then finally, down in the hidden search, the, the dash dashboard developer can use dollar user dollar and that will map to the user string replace intention that was created by the convert to intention module that converted the user setting key from search select lister. Do you have all that? Okay. Let's skip ahead for a second. We'll come back to search select lister, but let's let's first just purely on the topic of intention see how pull down deals with it, all this stuff. The answer is it doesn't. The pull down module here is only three lines long. It sends down an abstract key called user and then here that key is plugged directly into the search downstream and that's it. There's no middle step where you pass the key created by the pull down through the intentions layer. So, okay, I said I would go back. Let's go back to search select lister. The next big difference is that the search select lister has a lot of params that allow you to specify inside the search select lister what search or what save search it should run internally and whether it should pull in the time range and whether it should pull in other intentions. Here, this example is fairly simple. It's using this param to do, okay, this is the search that it should run internally and it should run that internal search over this internal time range. Okay. Let's go back to the pull down. Pull down, there's none of that. There's no internal search or internal save search. So there's no params to remember that are specific to pull down. Instead, it just picks up the main search, whatever search it got from upstream, or if it was a save search, it'll use that. Whatever time range was up there, it'll use that. If there's a post process, it'll use that. And then, so that means we can use a, just a regular old search module, the same one that you would use to render into a table. We can use this and this time range to give the pull down its options to render. There are some great other things about this improvement that really open things up, but we'll come back to them. Next up, just going by the bullet, um, next up is the template param. This is simple, straightforward, but fairly important to understand early on. Your pull down, and, and nothing is shown on this current slide, so, so if you're looking for what I'm talking about, it's not there. Now, your pull down is always going to be rendering field values. 
So you're going to, you know, each option in the pull down is going to be one of a particular, you know, one value of a particular uh, set of values. Now, most of the time when you're using that selected field value in a Splunk search, you will want to tack on that field name equals prefix back onto the beginning of the value. So here we go again. We're rendering source type fields. Here's a pull down name is source type. That means the key going downstream is going to be source type. And um, you can see here we're using it in the search. Well, so we had to put source type equals and tack it on there. Straightforward. But this can cause problems. For instance, if our selected source type is ever empty, or if the user ever picks an empty input, we would get source type equals quote quote sent to Splunk D, and that would be bad. That would cause a syntax error. So enter the template param. The template param allows us to pull this source type equals quote quote part up. So the whole search term can be sent down or not sent down as one single unit. So as you can see, within the template param, there's this dollar value dollar syntax. That's a shorthand inside, internal to the pull-down module that can refer to the current selected value being templated. And that's a convention you can see and use whenever you're inside any template param on any side view module. And you might notice here there's a lot of repetition of the field name. The source type appears, source type here, and then there's source type again here, and then source type again here. Um, for view developers who copy and paste view config a lot, by which I mean view developers, this can be tedious and it can introduce a lot of errors as you're copying and pasting a pull down around. So, within the pull down module's own params, you can also use dollar name dollar and avoid repeating the value that you have in the name param. So you see here, I've used dollar name dollar as a shorthand to avoid having to repeat source type. And actually, you can use this in several places, not just in the template param. So here can factor it all out. I can use dollar name everywhere and literally just have it in source type. Yeah, sorry, in the name param. That allows you to copy and paste a lot more freely and keep the, the sort of default flat config there. So next up, well, in a way, this is the same issue as the internal search thing. One implicit problem with the search select lister having these internal searches is that if you have four search select listers on the page, then that view will need to run four internal searches which is not always practical. In fact, those four searches plus the main search you're doing all this for, the main thing you're charting or whatever, well, now you have five searches. So you can slice this up into scheduled searches or you can put things in summary indexes or you can be clever and use input lookup commands. But ultimately, it's still five searches coming from somewhere. It's still a bunch of complexity, stuff to, stuff to wire together. Plus, remember, this whole slide here, this whole thing you're seeing here, this is just one search select lister block. Now picture four of these strung together and indented. With the pull-down module, on the other hand, we can use the post-process param and post-process searches to cleverly reuse the search results that we have from upstream. So first, let's see the search select lister way in a real view, and I'm going to show you some, some a living XML file. And we'll see four of them all strung together. So bear with me, this is going to be a little clunky. So here we have a big file, and this is showing a search select lister running this internal search, and then a convert to intention module. And that's just one, this is one dropdown. Below that, we have a second search select lister, and it's running a second internal search, and then it has these funky arguments to tell it to pay attention to the upstream value. So it'll pull in that intention, and then another convert to intention module. So back and forth across. We're pulling in time range and intentions from the outside, and then we're running this internal search, and then we're getting things from the inside back out, out through. Now, let's see the new way. Well, in the new way, we really just dispatch one search. We use one search module, one side view search module, to get all the unique combinations of group, series, date, minute, and date second. This is a silly example. This is built for to be a portable reference page. And so that's why you would never actually run this search or, run, or create this UI, but it's a good reference example. Then anyway, in these post-process params in the pull-down, we actually just get the one distinct field that we're interested in, in this case, group. You can see again, this dollar name syntax is everywhere. So this says, get me the, the dedupe the group field, give me just the group field, sort alphabetically by the group field, render that out as my pull down. 
And so each of these pulldowns can use the exact same search, and we only end up dispatching one search to render four pulldowns. So let's go back. Okay, we went through a lot of stuff. It's really, um, oh, here's the post process param again. Well, you just saw this name equals post process, deed of name. So you can, well, you really just saw this, so it's silly for me to show it again. We didn't talk about a lot of things. There's, there's still more advanced features in the pull down module that I did not talk about here. We didn't talk about the ability to do multi select pull downs, where the user can select more than one, and the module will automatically put together the Boolean logic and the search syntax with all the parens and everything for you. We also didn't talk about how pulldown can replace the static select module, but it can. And this is all covered very well in the side view documentation. Um, by the way, there's many, many pages of docs that are in this, inside the side view utils app that are dedicated to explaining just the pulldown module. It comes at it feature by feature, param by param, and really builds you up from really simple examples to more complicated ones. Um, just about the pulldown module, there are seven pages of dedicated documentation. Each of those includes a working example and acts as a little tutorial. Note again, if you have the latest version of SideView Utils from Splunkbase, that's actually not the latest version. That's a very old version. That's 1.3.5. The latest version is 2.2.8, and you can only download it from the SideView site, but it is free for internal use. Since the old days, there's been a ton of improvements, new modules, better docs, better tools. Nonetheless, it's still free for internal use, and there's no reason not to pull it down today and check it out. That's it. Thanks for watching. Check back for more episodes and download SideView Utils.